Simon, the world's first captive haggis. Animal Magicdom, written by Anna Devine, narrated by Brad Grahowski. Nestled deep within the enchanted realm of animal magicdom, you'll find a collection of curious creatures who live amongst amazing attractions, such as a magic flying fire engine, a giant bouncy pillow, and a grumpy old army jet. This magical kingdom is indeed home to an array of very special animals. These include Willow, the white-lipped deer, Kevin, the big tall elk, a mother and son duo of brown bears, Lenny the lynx, a clowder of wild cats, two gray wolves, Highland cows Angus and Lewis, and even an Asian short cowed otter named Oreo and his sidekick named Ketchup. There's also some incredible birds of prey, such as Amelia the Harris Hawk, Snowy Owl Bubbo, along with the most intelligent animal in the park, Johnny the striated Caracara. But even more remarkable is that Animal Magicdom is home to the only wild haggis ever to be seen up close in person by humans. His name is Simon, and visitors travel from across the world to see this remarkable and elusive creature who is known to roam the highlands of Scotland. Within Animal Magicdom, there are fascinating features and attractions to explore like the thrilling flying arena, the whimsical adventure land, the mysterious wolf woods, the enchanted witch's wood, and the bouncy pillow where children who visit can bounce their cares away. In charge of this wonderland is Andy, the diligent park keeper. Every night, Andy embarks on his usual routine of ensuring that every animal is safe and sound in their enclosures, ticking off his animal list one by one. Once his nighttime check is complete, Andy bids the animals good night and leaves for the day. What Andy doesn't know is that there is a magical reason that these creatures have come together in animal magicdom. At night, within the park boundaries, when the moon rises high in the sky, a mysterious transformation occurs. Every animal in animal magicdom, from the mightiest elk to the tiniest otter, possesses an extraordinary ability to speak like humans. But there is one rule, an ironclad pact among the animals. Humans must never ever discover their magical talent. One particular moonlit night, when the animals were cleverly chatting in hushed tones, they had a grand idea for an adventure. Because they could speak and understand humans, it was extremely easy for them to work out how to leave their enclosures for epic adventures. The animals decided that an eerie game of hide-and-seek in witches' wood was just the adventure for them. All the creatures, from Willow the white-lipped deer to the wildcats and the highland cows, eagerly gathered, forming a motley crew of adventurers. Simon, the world-famous wild haggis, was dancing with nervous excitement as they discussed the rules. Carefully plotted hiding spots and prepared for a night filled with laughter and fright and fun. The rules were set. Simon was going to be the first to count, and the others would scatter into the darkness to find the most creative hiding places. With the moon's soft glow illuminating their path, the animals ventured deep into the enchanted woods, their hearts beating with anticipation. Simon began counting down, a twinkle of mischievousness in his eyes. The other animals scattered in every direction, 
Some blended into the shadows, while others hid behind trees or nestled in the underbrush. Some teamed up in pairs, and others bravely set off alone. Laughter echoed through the night as they found their hiding spots, eagerly waiting for Simon to begin the search. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready or not, here I come, shouted Simon as he started tiptoeing around searching for his well-hidden friends. However, as the game unfolded, Simon got a little carried away and a little bit braver. He started off his search with boundless enthusiasm and ended up venturing way farther than he had ever intended. The eerie beauty of the witch's wood with its winding, fog-shrouded paths had him enchanted. Lost in the magnetism of the enchanted forest, Simon wandered deeper and deeper into the night. Time passed, and Simon's search became an adventure of its own as it got darker and darker. And the ground got heavier and heavier and boggier and boggier. Meanwhile, the animals who were waiting patiently to be found began to worry what had happened to Simon. Why was he taking so long? Why had nobody shrieked out loud when they had been caught? Why was everything so quiet? Psst! Psst! The animals began to whisper to one another, each hoping that someone would locate the star finder of their hide-and-seek game. Hours ticked by, and their excitement turned to nervous chitter-chatter of, I hope Simon's okay. What on earth could have happened to him? We need to do something. The animals realized they might have won the game, but they had lost Simon, the star attraction of animal magicdom. Panic began to spread among them, and they rushed back to their enclosures. They knew animal magicdom was in big trouble if Simon was missing. With haste and a flurry of creativity, they came up with a cunning plan and crafted a decoy Simon using twigs and leaves and mud and stones. They tried their best to mimic Simon's appearance in the hope that they could trick Andy into believing everything was normal when he came to do his morning check. They knew the consequences of Simon's disappearance could be serious. The following morning, Andy, unaware of the previous night's adventures, continued with his usual morning routine. Morning, sleepy Simon, he laughed as he checked off his list, just like any other day. The animals discreetly watched with bated breath as Andy completed his checks. They sighed with relief as he gave the thumbs up to open up the park. The visitors soon began arriving as the park came to life with people eager to see the wonderful creatures who lived there. And as usual, Simon's enclosure was surrounded by boys and girls trying to get a peek of the elusive wild haggis. However, Keen eyes are often found in the most unexpected places. An eagle-eyed boy named Lucas, visiting the park with his mother, was staring intently at a very still Simon. He stared and stared and stared at the bundle, which looked quite like Simon. As curiosity bubbled within him, he tugged on his mummy's sleeve. Mummy? 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 He said. That is not Simon the Haggis. That Haggis is fake. But Lucas's mother was too busy chatting on her phone and paid no attention. Instead, she grabbed Lucas's arm and said, Come along, Lucas. Let's go see the wolves. But a very persistent Lucas was not giving up. Mummy, 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 that haggis is fake. 
unbeknownst to Lucas, his words did not fall on deaf ears. Nearby at the wolf enclosure, the wolves who were watching and listening to everything overheard him mention the fake Agus. In a brave yet rebellious move, they decided that they had to break the sacred animal rule. They would let Lucas know their secret. While Lucas's mother remained chatting on her phone, the wolves crept quietly toward Lucas. Psst, psst, as they began to speak in clear human-like voices. Lucas, startled and curious, turned his attention to the extraordinary sight before him. He was mesmerized as the wolves calmly explained the dire situation. They needed a hero to find Simon the Haggis and return him safely to his enclosure before their secret was exposed to the world. They needed to know if Lucas was up for the mission. Lucas was in awe of the talking wolves and courageously accepted the challenge as he embarked on a secret mission to find Simon. Lucas tugged and tugged on his mother's sleeve until he finally got her attention. Mommy, can I please go play on the bouncy pillow? I promise I'll come right back. Lucas's mummy agreed and gave Lucas ten minutes to play on his own. Lucas gave the wolves a sly wink and rushed off at lightning speed. He raced around every nook and cranny of the park before following the dark and winding paths of the witch's wood. He soon spotted what looked like little haggis footsteps and was sure he could hear Bubbo the Owl hooting to guide him along. Finally, in the heart of the mystical woods, he found Simon, the world-famous haggis. He was cold and trembling and stuck in a bog, far from his usual mischievous self. Lucas gently scooped him up and cradled him inside his jacket. Simon smiled sleepily up at Lucas, as if he knew he had been rescued. Lucas ran as fast as he could, and when nobody was looking, stretched over the fence and placed Simon back in his enclosure. In that moment, a bond formed between a special boy and a special haggis. A silent understanding that needs no words. With Simon safely nestled back in his enclosure, the animals of animal magicdom watched in awe and relief as their secret was kept safe. Lucas returned to his mother, who was once again back chatting on her phone. Lucas, she exclaimed, look at the state of you. How did you get so dirty? You look like you've been playing in a bog. As they left the park, Lucas's eyes sparkled with the knowledge of his newfound friends in animal magicdom. He was now the keeper of their incredible secret. The question remains, will Lucas choose to keep his secret, or will he tell the tale of his enchanting adventure? Only time will tell as the story of animal magicdom continues to weave its spell. And Lucas, the brave hero, treasures his magical friendship with the talking creatures who live there.